All right, today is another strange day, strange in its own way. It is the Sabbath, the Jewish Sabbath on a Saturday. Well, the Christian Sabbath is Sunday, and I think the Islamic Sabbath is Friday. Today is the, today is the Jewish Sabbath. And I've been caught between Sabbath consciousness and everyday consciousness and not just everyday consciousness but also I came up against today the the kind of some of the kinks to this experiment of doing a drawing and a video every day for 45 days it's I tried to do a drawing this this morning and it was just not happening. And I was trying to figure out well, what's going on. You know? And then I kind of meditated on it and kind of felt in my being. It was like I've been outputting so much I haven't gotten input. I haven't incubated. In terms of the drawing, the um, nurturing and incubating around my drawings, because I've been doing one every day. So I'm pondering not doing a drawing today. Well, I did do a drawing today. It just didn't turn out that great. So maybe that's the answer. It's like, it doesn't have to be. It's not about, I'm getting it now that I'm talking, when I got a little allergy. <coughs> there we go. Uh, even doing this video feels kind of weird because for Sabbath consciousness, I'm supposed to not be creating anything. I'm supposed to be witnessing creation. So maybe that's what's going on here, is I'm coming up against this kind of primordial energy of the Sabbath and what I'm trying to do, what I've been holding as an intentional field. So that's very interesting. Plus, it's a very hot day. Very hot. And, uh, hello? Very hot day, and I'm like, whoa, am I melting? So there's that too. Plus, I, a couple of days ago, I think I ate some spoiled food, so I've been dealing with that. Such is life, and other stresses stresses. Uh, this is interesting. The other day I was hanging out with some friends and uh, we were having a great conversation and all that and then I don't even know what happened but I just started talking about that I'm homeless and but I was talking about it in a way about how much I've learned from it and I really have learned so much from it in a deep way in sorrowful way and I started sharing it but then afterwards I realized huh, I kind of fell into this interesting trap in our society in our world because how can I explain this how can I hold this it's I would fall into the same trap I think we all do it's like if it's very hard to be with people who are not in your economic sphere because it's like, for example, when I was friends with a big movie star, a big TV star actually at that time, it was like awkward because do they always kind of pay for me? Do I assume that? Do I pay for myself? But then the places they go are, are, I can't afford. So it just creates this kind of rift in lifestyle is one level. Another level I think is that we have this concept of homelessness that everyone who's homeless is broken somehow. And it's funny, but it's almost like, like people tell me, some people tell me, that in order for me to get out of homelessness, I can't really tell people I'm homeless because then they hold that about me and then 
you know, it's like, uh, it's kind of like a, you know, well, they can't handle life, they can't handle stuff, so, they, you know, how can we, you know, how can we help them, you know, it's too much, you know, whatever. Um, I'm not sure how I'm, what I'm talking about here because of the heat, but <laughs> the idea is, is that somehow, oh, I got my message, the Course in Miracles reminder. Uh, it's nice that it didn't do with the ring. Didn't want to interrupt me here, but it's, uh, what's today's? Today is only salvation can be said to cure. Uh, No divine speak to us and let us be healed. And uh, while those words are very Christic and very religious, connected, uh, what I like about the Course is it really doesn't, it kind of tries to redefine them in more broad and general ways. So really kind of salvation and healing is like just about waking up from the illusion to the truth of us, to the truth of life, which is the oneness that I've been talking about. So, waking up to the oneness. Interesting. So at this moment, when I was talking about how there's this gap that you experience as a homeless person, in a way, it's kind of like it's an untouchable, you know, it's like a I think in Indian society they call them the untouchables. And I think there's, a, there's an idea about the untouchables in that, I'm going to switch hands here, there we go. And we're in the, I'm walking under the sun, but that's all right. The untouchables is kind of, from my understanding of it, which I'm not an expert on it, so, but from my holding of it, the way I'm using it, may not be exactly how they use it, but it works for me. Uh, it's like you're invisible, you know, you're, and I have been guilty of this myself. Before I became homeless, I would look at, I, I wouldn't look at the homeless people, I would avoid them. But I think that, I think on one level, for me it was, now that I'm there, for me I'm realizing it was that Deep down, there's always this fear that if we get off the treadmill, we could end up there too. And I've been thinking about the whole idea of universal basic income and the coming that AI and robots are going to take all work. And what are we going to do? And it made me realize that have we reached a point in the evolution of humanity where we have the potential to give everyone the base of the self-actualization pyramid, which according to Maslow, he's the one who talks about this, it's the safety and security. So if everybody had a roof over their head and food to eat, no matter what, what would we do? Well, I know what I would do. I, would, I, would, I think I would flourish because when I've had that, I do. And that's kind of my crux. It's one of my challenges is I've never been able to really kind of do that. <laughs> I mean, of course, when I was a kid, I didn't have to do that. And when I went to college, graduate school, I was on scholarship and loans. And that was a very safe environment. But my work career, it's like, <laughs> thanks. That was a car and I'm coming across the street. So my work career is a little bit different in that having somehow, and I've been working on this, but somehow doing, having to do something to survive. I know this is from all of human history. This is what we've had to do. It is so hard for me. It's like the stress of it is just so intense. I cannot, it's like I could empathically feel this, this uh, loss of the safety and security. So, and also I have to say, as a 
now I'm thinking about this even more. This is very interesting, I think, as a filmmaker. <sighs> when I was at the AFI in my first year, I, one of the, the second video I made, I made a film about homeless, a, a homeless guy. And uh, it was like my most successful video and really big, but it was also a very profound experience in that I tried to do lived storytelling, um, what I call lived storytelling. Maybe someone else does too, but that's what I'm calling it. Uh, I, I got this from, we had a seminar with Sam Shepard, and he talked about if you start with some truth, either truth in a character, like uh, if you know somebody, you know, like the story of somebody in this real experience, your own experience or someone else's experience, an event, something that's real and true, and then you let it kind of evolve from that trueness, then you'll have these living stories, these very potent, very true, resonating stories. So I tried to do that, and I tried to find something, and I, I actually couldn't. I don't know if I talked about this. I don't know, but if I'm telling the story over again, think of it as a soupy story that every time it's told, it's told a little differently, and you can maybe learn something new, <laughs> which is true, actually. I'm going to switch around here so the sun's not in, my, in the lens. So, finally, I was knocking my head against the wall trying to figure out and find something. I surrendered and I said, oh, I give up for now. I gave up and a friend was in town visiting, so I took her out to eat to a restaurant in Malibu um, on the ocean. And we were there in a booth and a homeless guy came in and sat in the booth right behind us, well, behind her. I could see him, but, but, you know, it was behind her. And he was alone, and then he started talking to the empty side of the booth. And he was, I started listening to him, and it was this strange, but wondrous kind of dialogue. Um, kind of like, I'm sad and profound at the same time. And funny. I mean, it was this weird kind of, I mean, it was like this weird kind of combination. And what it was, was he was saying to the empty space, write this down. And they would, he would wait to listen. He said, okay, must go to Montana for Easter. He listened and he said, oh, oh yeah. So there was this town, there was this town in Montana and every year they pick a normal guy off the street and select him to be Jesus. And for the Easter parade, they, he walks down the street carrying the cross. And then he looked and pondered. He said, I've always wanted to be that guy. And it just, that just blew my mind. It was like, this is it. Yeah. So, I went and I studied homelessness. I got really into it, and I, I, I talked to other homeless people, and I, you know, I hung out with them, and I just really got deeply in, involved in it. And uh, I created this story called "Write This Down." The video's online. And I, uh, when I'll post the, uh, the link to it somewhere. Anyways, uh, this may be crazy. This is what it feels like, man. It really feels like because film is my voice, because I discovered it in high school as a way to speak without talking because of my stuttering, every film I've made has had a very deep psycho-spiritual impact on me. Uh, sometimes really positive and sometimes not so positive. So I can't help but wonder if my deep dive into homelessness kind of did something in time into my psyche and stuff. Well, I've kind of 
empathically kind of connected with that consciousness field and it's you know it's kind of part of my being now I know that's crazy but hey you know I I uh, I was I, I did uh, an educational film on communicable diseases and afterwards I I, I had um, germophobia <laughs> so, that's I mean that's absolutely true so I, I didn't have it before but I did after so that immersion is kind of I go when I work in film or any medium in art it's full of immersion and it impacts my being so I really have to be careful about what what I create what I immerse myself in <sighs> oh, that's interesting anyways I'm meandering but I'm I'm letting the energy just move through me and uh, it is what it is so uh, it's been about 16 minutes that's long enough <sighs> so sending out energetic blessings on this Sabbath to all the Sabbaths for all the traditions for all the beings mm. Namaste Peace out and peace in. Yeah.